today we are going to talk about flams. Now the flams I'm referring to are also what I call the isolated flam because it's the flam with nothing else attached to it. But the correct name of it obviously is just the flam. Now, when playing flams, it's important to understand what each hand is doing and how it controls the quality of the flam and then what you need to do to be a consistent performer when it comes to flams. The first thing about flams is that they are an onomatopoeia, like many of our rudiments, which means they were named by what they sound like. So. The perfect flam in our situation would sound like its name, flam. You see a flam, you're gonna notice that there's two parts to the flam on the page. There's the grace note and the primary stroke. The grace note is the smaller note that looks like a little eighth note with a slash and it's tied to the other note. The larger note is the primary stroke. And that note can be any rhythm you want it to be. But the grace note always looks like the same little eighth note. All right, each part of the flam has its own job. For the grace note, its job is to determine what the flam sounds like. So whether I have a quality flam or maybe not as good of a flam, it's up to the grace note to make that happen. The primary stroke is a little different. The primary stroke determines the rhythm of the flam. So because of that, the primary stroke is also the skeleton of the flam. The other job of the primary stroke is that it names the flam because whatever hand you're playing the primary stroke with, that's the name of the flam. So if I play my primary stroke with a right hand, that's a right flam. And the last job of the primary stroke is it determines the volume or the dynamic of your flam. So by adjusting the heights on the primary stroke, I can adjust how loud or soft the flam is being performed. So that's the two parts of the flam, the grace note and the primary stroke. So now we're going to move on and talk about how to apply these to your drumming. Number one. When I go to play a flam, so I'm going to start with a right flam because my right hand is going to play the primary stroke. When I play a right flam, my left hand, the grace note, its job is only to stay about one inch or one and a half inches from the pad. So that grace note is a real soft note. It's heard, but it's not a dominant sound in the flam rudiment. The worst thing about the grace note is when we lift it to play a flam, that's when all the problems start. So the first thing you want to teach yourself is how to just play a nice relaxed grace note without having to lift my hand. Because when I go to play a flam and the primary stroke comes up, the grace note hand sometimes wants to go with it. So we get this double lift look. But I've got to teach the grace note hand that when the primary stroke comes up, you don't move. So the first thing we do is what I call setting the flam. So I'm going to start with both my tips in plain position. I'm going to bring the right hand up and freeze it halfway through the flam. And this is setting the flam and is teaching your grace note hand to stay in position. And I do this a few times with either hand just so I can learn what it feels like to not move the grace note hand. Once I've done that, now it's time to bring the primary stroke back down and make our flam. So when I set the flam, I'm now frozen halfway through. The grace note hasn't gone anywhere yet. When it's time to drop the primary stroke, I have to teach the grace note hand how to wait until the last second before I hit the pad so I hear the word flam. So when it's time to play the flam, the first thing I'm going to do is go back to setting my flam and I'm going to freeze there so I can double check the grace note on whether it lifted or stayed in place. Once I get to that frozen position, 
Now I'm gonna bring the primary stroke back down to the head and just barely put the grace note in right before the primary stroke hits. Now you'll notice when I play that, my grace note hand may wiggle a little bit. It may go from one inch to one and a half. Or so. That's fine, okay? The grace note hand wiggling is not a big deal. It's the lifting that's the problem. So you can let it move, you just can't lift it, okay? So going back to my first flam, I lift my primary stroke, I check my grace note, it hasn't moved. From here I'm ready to play, and I bring it back down to playing position. Back up, back down. Now when you first do this, you're gonna notice that you're getting a lot of different sounds out of your flams, which is very normal. So the first sound that we may hear is what we call a fa-lam. Fa-lam. A fa-lam means that the grace note hit too soon before the primary stroke. When that happens, it makes the sound fa-lam. And another word for that flam is an open flam because the space between the grace note and the primary stroke is too wide or too open, we call that an open flam or phalam. Now the other problem sound you may hear is what we call a fam, fam. And a fam just means that my grace note waited too long to play. So when you hear that, you don't hear both hands, you just hear one hit. So it's almost like a double stop, but in a flam formation. That's called a fam. And our word for that is a closed flam because the grace note and the primary stroke are all the way together. The distance was closed. So if this is my good flam, this is my flam, and this is my fam. And so we're looking for flam every time. Now on a side note, as you get better at flams, I would practice being able to play all three variations of the flam on command. because then that tells me I know how to control the grace note enough that I can play the flam any of the ways I want to. The next thing with the flam is now that I've gotten used to setting my flam, I have to obviously work it on the left side, then the right side, then the left side. It's funny, even though for a lot of us our right hand is our dominant hand, our right hand grace notes are usually worse than our left hand grace notes because our right hand is so used to leading that when it's time for it to not move, it wants to jump anyway. So I would definitely spend extra time setting the left flam and just teaching that right grace note how to stay in place. We need to learn how to make each stroke a very relaxed, smooth feeling stroke. For a lot of people, when they put their hands together to play flams, we start getting this real tight motion and tight grip because they're trying to make sure everything is done right. Well, actually the most consistent flams come from being super relaxed, just like anything else in drumming. So what I'm gonna practice first is one hand at a time. And I'm just gonna make sure that my staccato stroke is relaxed, no extra tension. Then I'm gonna practice my grace note. Make sure it's nice and relaxed, no extra tension. And then my goal is to put those two together while staying super relaxed. When we talked about lifting the grace note, here's some problems you'll see with lifted grace notes. The first one is the real sloppy flam with a lifted grace note. 
The grace note's lifted high. It's now flopping up into the air, and I get this wide open, out of control flam. The other problem with the lifted grace note for some people is when they bring it up and they squeeze, it becomes easy to play a really tight double stop. So by keeping that grace note in position, it gives you a better chance to always play the flam you want. Another thing about the primary stroke is that it controls the volume or the dynamic of the flam. So because my grace note is always one and a half, one inches right in that area, it's not gonna change the volume of the flam. The primary stroke though does. So if I want a loud forte flam, then I play a nice full right hand. That's my primary stroke. My grace note stay down at a half inch. If I want a mezzo forte flam or a piano flam, or double piano. Notice that no matter how loud my right hand was, my grace notes stayed in place. So I would practice on one hand going through all the dynamic levels to get comfortable leaving that grace note in place. trying to play the same sounding flam every time, just change the volume. Working through all the different dynamic levels will help you when it's time to play whatever the music asks you to play. And you can do that with alternating as well. working through every dynamic level. I'm gonna do a couple lines out of the packet. We're on page 319. And what we're gonna do, this is the first develop a good flam. I'm gonna play a skeleton measure, which is primary stroke only. One, two, three, four. Then I'm gonna add the grace note in the second measure. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Good, and my goal is when I add the grace note is that the primary stroke doesn't change. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. So right there you saw I tightened up when it was time to play the grace note. Again, relaxed all the way through. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Good. Next thing is we're going to go to the left hand. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And my goal is to end in playing position every time. That's what I'm looking for with the end of my flams. We can also start alternating our flams. And that's gonna take a little bit of work to get comfortable with that because some more things are happening when you start alternating. The first way I wanna do it is by spreading out the flams so they're not rapid fire, starting with my primary stroke again as a skeleton and then adding my grace note. One, two, three, four. 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 And my goal after every flam is to reset itself to playing position so I'm always coming from the right place. If I miss the staccato stroke on the first flam, now my right hand rebounded up to a position where I'm going to have a really bad next flam. So I'm watching to make sure that when I finish I'm in playing position so the next flam has a chance to be just as good as the flam before it. When I'm quickly alternating flams, let's look at what happens then. 
So it's the same idea. I'm going to play my flam. I'm going to end in playing position. But then the next primary stroke hand has to come up quickly. So by ending in the right position and then bringing the left up quickly, I can play the right flam and then set the left flam and freeze. And what I'm looking for is, is that grace note ready to go? And you saw on the second example, I didn't play staccato, so I was not ready to play the next flam. So the secret is the primary stroke plays a good staccato, so it's ready to be the next grace note. So you can just practice switching, setting, switching, setting. If I speed that up, I now have my skeleton followed by my flams. And one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now you notice in there I did it two different ways. The first way, I did an immediate upstroke to the next flam. That's good for practicing, but sometimes depending on the speed of the music, you may just want to finish the first flam and then play the next flam whenever it's time. Because if I don't need to come up quickly, then I'm just going to hang out here in playing position. This is going to be the last line from the packet, page 319. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one. And so by doing those faster flams, everything I talked about, the setting and the freezing and the placement, all had to happen without any thought. Flams are a rudiment that take time, patience, to make sure you get them at a level that you're happy with. Because no other flam rudiment can be played until this one, the isolated flam, is consistent, relaxed, and sounds really good. So I definitely recommend you spend a lot of time getting comfortable with your flams so then we can start adding them to the other flams in the flam family. All right, and that is the flam. So go grab your pad, grab your sticks, and start working on them today. Be patient, take your time, stay relaxed, and once you have an amazing flam in your arsenal, then you're ready to move on to all the other flam rudiments that we throw at you. So good luck and get to practicing. Extra little tip here, you don't have to do this, but when I first learned flams um, and all the flam rudiments with Marty Hurley, he made me do a lot of what we call fake flams because it tested my ability to keep the grace note low and relaxed without letting the primary stroke affect it at all. So what you would do is you would come up to play the flam and on the way back down, instead of hitting the primary stroke, you stop the primary stroke. So if I did that, we would have fake flams. So just something to mess around with. And we'll look at the fake flam when we get into the flam paradiddle and the flam accents in later videos. All right. If you have any questions, just email me. Um, the email will be up there. And thanks. Enjoy your new flam rudiment.